I have one guy that I've been trying to, to help him do tshuva for over a year now. Uh, Baruch Hashem, we've had many, many people that have done tshuva, but this one particular guy is uh, someone that's a kfuy tova, ungrateful person, and, you know, I sent him a package, sent him CDs, I introduced him to this, answered a million and a half questions, and he decides that he's going to start criticizing my lectures, publicly. He's going to start criticizing my lectures, write his little comments, uh, and uh, you know, in his opinion, oh, he's too hard, he's too harsh, he's too this, he's too that. Like I made the rules. Like I, like Hashem asked me, hey, your own, what do you think of Shabbat? Which which kind of punishment we should give? Oh, but does oh, okay, we're gonna write that in the Torah. What else do you think we should do? Okay, no, okay, we're gonna write that. Too. He asked me, like, it's my permission. So, oh, he's too this, he's too that. Now, and he says the same thing about Rabbi Mizrahi, and he says this publicly, this fool, which makes him a machtia rabin. Now. He sent me this uh, thing, this uh, clip of another rabbi that I know. And he says, listen, he's saying that uh, you shouldn't be aggressive with people. Maybe he's talking about you and Rav Mizrahi. (laughs) And I said, instead of answering in the way that my anger wanted to answer him, you kfu tova, you this, you that. And my anger wanted to answer him and give it to him on his head. I spoke the emails and this and that. So I said to him, uh, you know what? Let me ask you something. You keep Shabbat? You keep? No. You keep? It's hard for me. Okay. Keep kosher? Uh, whenever I get a chance. You late tefillin? Oh, no, I don't own them. I don't own tefillin, he tells me. He said, uh... What mitzvah do you keep? Oh, I'm nice to people. Okay, we'll send you a cookie. Fine. He says, okay, so I'm trying to find out what classifies you as a professional, as an expert criticizer on Kiruv or Judaism when you don't do either one of them. You don't keep any mitzvot, so you can't tell me you're an expert on Judaism. You don't know anything about it. You're still violating Shabbat as a Jew. Obviously, you don't know anything about Judaism. No one that actually knows and believes violates. Some people know and don't believe, so they violate. But some, the rest of the people, the vast majority of the public, violates only because they don't know. Miskanim. So we have to teach them. So this guy says that... Uh, He's going to tell me how to do my lectures, how to do Q, how to help people do tshuva, which Baruch Hashem, there's new people doing tshuva every single day. We have a news, uh, just uh, yesterday, a young kid was an atheist, maybe four or five months ago, Baruch Hashem just started going to yeshiva. An atheist four months ago, Baruch Hashem going to yeshiva today. Same Torah that you're reading. You say it, you'll do the same thing. It has nothing to do with me. But it's the right way. It's the full Torah or... Part of the Torah. Part of the Torah doesn't work. Whole Torah works. So I tell him, how, how are you criticizing me? And you don't do anything. You don't, do you make anybody do tshuva? You don't do tshuva yourself. You can tell somebody how to do it. Not that I'm an expert, but what are you doing to, to make yourself think that you're that way? And that's the thing that people fail to understand. They have such a big yetzara that if you go to a doctor... And the doctor's going to tell you, listen, I see this is the diagnosis that you have. I think you need to do this one, two, three procedures. You're going to tell him, listen, doctor, I don't know. You know what? The second procedure, I don't agree with. I think you should go from the aorta into the... He's going to look at his plan. Look, are you telling me how to be a doctor? What do you know about you? Where would you go to medical school? Oh, I didn't go. Would you study medicine? I didn't study. So how are you telling me as a doctor what to do? You go to a lawyer. You tell you, listen, we're going to fight for this case. You're going to win these first three cases. The fourth case you're going to lose because we're going to do this. And this law is this. And this law is that. Da, 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 da. He tells you the whole report. He says, no, you know what? I don't think you're fighting the right way. I think we should fight for the fourth one and not the other three. And I think this is illegal and that's legal. He goes, you know anything about law? Are you a lawyer? No. Do you study law? No. Have you ever been in a courtroom before? No. What'd you do? Oh, I watched some cases on TV. 
in the movies. I saw Tom Cruise saying, you can't handle the truth. So that makes me a lawyer. The lawyer says, okay, listen, honestly, I don't want to defend you anymore. I think you should go to, you should claim insanity. Because that's what you are. You have a thing on your shoulder. Like say, Baba Kama say the doctor to believe what the patient say without making his own research. It's poshet, it's neglect. Right. It's so neglect. now, so with law, with medicine, with everything else, people... They don't go into the doctor's office and tell him that. They don't go into the lawyer's office and tell him that. Why? Because they're paying him $900 an hour to tell him what he's telling them. But to me, when I'm doing it for free, they want to tell me everything to do. No, you got to say this, you got to say that, you got to say this, you got to say that, because it's free. If they actually paid me $900 an hour, maybe they won't tell me what to do. So maybe I start charging you guys. So blame him. So, <laughs> you have to be qualified. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna judge somebody, you have to be at least at his level. At least at his level. That's why when when somebody says, "Oh, I don't agree with the Rambam," or "I don't agree with the Shulchan Aruch," Rabbi Yosef Kaul, I don't agree with Rabbi Akiva. I don't, I don't think he's right here. You don't think he's right? He was able to revive the dead. You think your opinion matters, Bechlal? was able to go from one place to another to a different city in an instant. You can't even go to the bathroom in an instant. You're going to agree with them, disagree with them? You're still trying to figure out how to read what it says in Rashi over here. You're going to agree with them, disagree with, 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 the, with Rambam? You're going to disagree with the, uh, Rabbi Akiva? That's the thing. People don't know the value of Torah. So they say they think it's like open to opinions. It's open to, you know... Whatever your interpretation is. And what happened, and the reason why this all happened, is because you have people like the reformer and the conservative that made it popular to criticize the Torah and use our own measly opinions. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.